Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to talk a little bit about notation because notation is really important in understanding what the notation means and what it stands for. So here we have a function f of x which is equal to y equals to x squared plus 4x. So sometimes we see it like this y equals x squared plus 4x. When you see it like that you know that the dependent variable is y and the independent variable is x. Sometimes you can also see it like this y is a function of x is equal to x squared plus 4x or we can see it like this f of x is equal to x squared plus 4x so you see even with normal algebraic notation there's a lot of different ways in which you can write a simple function like that now the same is true for derivatives but sometimes there's a special meaning for some of the notations so let's go ahead and start talking about that so the derivative of y with respect to x, you hear that a lot. When you take the derivative of something, you take it with respect to something else. Typically, y is the dependent variable, and then with respect to becomes the independent variable. See, the independent variable can be changed, and as x changes, as the independent variable changes, y can change. Now, you don't have to use y and x. You can use other variables. You can z and w and z and s, and you can use any number of characters to represent the variables one being the independent variable, the other one being the dependent variable, so it doesn't really matter. We typically like to use y and x. So when we do that, when we take the derivative of y with respect to x, then we write d dx of y. So d divided by dx, that means I'm taking the derivative with respect to the variable x of y. And so commonly this is then written as dy dx. That means the exact same thing. Sometimes instead of writing dy dx we write it as y prime. Now of course when you write it like this you may not know what your independent variable is. Maybe it's y and z or y and t or y and s. You don't know but at least when you see this you know that you're taking the derivative of the variable y not knowing what it is with respect to. But there's no difference in the meaning between these it just means that when you write it like this, you get a little bit more information than when you get it like that. Sometimes it's even written like this. So, and I'm not going to write an equal sign here. Sometimes we write it like a D with a tick mark like that. That means the first derivative. And now I use the word first because, yes, you can do something like take the second derivative and the third derivative and the fourth derivative. And let me show you in just a moment what that is. So there's obviously different ways of writing it like that. Now sometimes you can also write something like this, y with a dot over it. Now that has a special meaning. This also means the derivative of y, but when you, when you write it with a little dot, it usually means with respect to t when t stands for time. So this really means dy dt. So that means that the function of y should be always, of course, a function of time, t, before you can write it like that. But again, no difference. This simply means when you see y with a dot on it, that it's simply the derivative of y with respect to the variable t when t stands for time. Now, what was that second derivative? Well, let's first take the derivative of this. So if I write now f prime of x, which is equal to dy dx, which is equal to y prime, all the same thing, that's a derivative. If I take the derivative of that, I get 2x plus 4. Now what happens when I take the second derivative? Second derivative, well we'll get into that a little bit more, but here I want to talk about the notation. Well, if the first derivative is a measure of the change of the function, then the second derivative is a measure of the change of the first derivative. How fast is the first derivative changing? So we won't get into the details here, but at least what does the notation look like? Well, the second derivative would be f double prime of x. So we put two tick marks there, that means the second derivative. If you write it like that, we write like d square of y dx square. That means the second derivative of, of y with respect to x. And so we can also write it as y double prime. And then you probably already guessed it, if we use the character d, we write d with two tick marks. Or, when we write it like this, we'd say y double dot that again means that it's with respect to time and then we write it as d square y dt square and of course that doesn't belong with this function here because this function was a function uh, with the variable x 
he would have to write a different function, perhaps something like this, when y is equal to 4t squared minus 5t plus 2. And then we can take the first and the second derivative and write it like this and write it like that if we want to do that. So quickly, first derivative, y dot is equal to 8t minus 5. Multiply the 2 times the 4, and then the t here drops out. And then y double dot is equal to simply just 8. So this, tells, this gives me a function that tells me how fast y changes when time changes. This is a function, but just with a single, uh, uh, not a variable, but with a single constant here, that tells me how fast the derivative is changing. So it's just constantly changing at the value of 8. Now one more thing that I want to write is, let's take this thing right here again, come over here, and I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to write this as dy dx is equal to 2x plus 4. And I'm going to take what's in the denominator here, where we have the derivative of y respect x, and I'm going to take this and move it over there and write this as dy is equal to the quantity 2x plus 4 times dx. Sometimes you'll see that. Now, what is that? What does that mean? Well, these things right here are now called differentials. So they give that a different name. And again, here, that's a differential. So dx is a differential, dy is a differential. It really represents a minuscule, very, very tiny change in x and a very, very tiny change in y. In the limit, of course, when the change in x goes to 0. So these are very tiny minute changes. So what this helps us do is, if we can plug in a very small change for x, when x has a certain value, we can figure out how fast y is changing. For example, if x is equal to 2 and dx is equal to 0 0.1, how fast would y be changing at, at that moment? And so if we plug those numbers in, then dy would be equal to, and of course that's dy evaluated at x equals 2, so we may want to write that down for clarity. So dy, when x is equal to 2, is equal to 2 times 2 plus 4 times 0 0.1, and of course 2 times 2 is 4 plus 4 is 8 times 0.1 is equal to 0 0.8. What that means is that if x is equal to 2, and x changes from 2 to 2.1, a change of 0.1, then y will change 0.8. That's how much y will change when x changes by 0.1. But that's only true if x is 2. If x is 5, it will be a different value. If x is 10, it will be a different value. But just to kind of get you a feeling that, yes, we do talk about derivatives a lot, but sometimes we also talk about differentials. And yes, there are some videos out there that I made that also talks a little bit more specifically about how to use differentials to calculate changes in x and changes in y and so forth. But hopefully this clears up the problem with notation. The reason why it's sometimes so complicated is because there's so many different ways of writing the same thing. And you start wondering, wow, why did I write it like that instead of like that? And sometimes it's just pure uh, a preference. I'd rather write it like this, or you get lazy. Instead of writing dy dx, you write y prime, because you don't want to write dy dx all the time. So that's how you write the notation for derivatives. And if you want to go to second derivative or third derivative, you can see that you put threes there, put three th tick marks there. The, the methodology is pretty well the same for multiple derivatives as well as for a single derivative. All right, so hopefully that clears it up. Now you should know what derivatives are and you should feel more comfortable with the notation of derivatives.